Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about healthier choices management, taking some more HCMC. So today, healthier choices management has actually reported their fourth quarter and four year fiscal 2021 financial results. Now this is quite exciting because this we can work out roughly how much it costs for the acquisition of EIR Hydration, an IV therapy center, which is actually announced in November the 30th of 2021 so it's quite exciting we can also see how well they did during 2021 as well now we they've also done a lot more things since they made a shareholder letter at december 27th they've done you know multiple things firstly we've seen the first healthy choice wellness center the acquisition of mother Earth storehouse and then the grand opening of healthy choice wellness center and so they've done multiple things which we will actually see in the next quarter results Probably uh, we won't see a lot of results for obviously the grand opening of the Healthy Choice Wellness Center in Florida because that was announced March 30th. So we're most likely going to see the result coming in for the second quarter report. But for the first quarter report of 2022, we can see a lot more, especially the acquisition of a mother of storehouse. So I've brought up pretty much the fourth quarter result, the third quarter result, as you guys can see here, and the second quarter result. We're going to be comparing a tiny bit and just using some of the data just down here as in terms of loss from operation and that the cash and cash equivalents that they had on hand again this is quite exciting because this can give us a outlook to how well HMC is doing what they're going to continue to do and kind of you know what we should be expecting I'm sure a question that is on everyone's heads and I just want to get that straight off the bat is that right now they still have 26.5 million or to be exact 26 million four hundred ninety six thousand four hundred four dollars of cash and cash equivalent so that's how much they have left now this is quite important because this does show you know how much and what HCMC can do during 2022 so it is quite important that we knew that they had this amount of money you know going into 2022 but before we completely go to that bit let's talk about everything the full year fiscal results and recent highlights. So total current assets for the year end of 20 December 31st amounted to 28.8 million compared to 3 uh, million, a 25.8 million increase when compared to December 31st of 2020. Now, obviously one of the biggest reasons why we uh, see a massive increase was because of the offering. And so everyone should understand that it was due to an offering. Whilst their company could have obviously improved, that wasn't a big reason for why they had this much money. However, we will see this money obviously being used. And so hopefully by the end of this year, we're going to see them increase their cash power, but because of their actual businesses now. So total current liabilities for the year ended December 31st, 2021, amounted to $2.5 million compared to $5.7 million, a $3.2 million decrease when compared to 30, December 31st, 2020. As a result, the working capital improved by roughly $29 million. So the liability actually decreased, which is obviously very good. It shows that they're obviously doing well in terms of the finance. If a company can decrease their liability, it means that they have a good amount of cash power to obviously work with now just because they do have liability doesn't mean the end uh, you know most companies do tend to have liabilities uh, it's just a way of the operation how it goes but when they do manage to pay some off it does show that they are confident in um, their cash power now, net sales from operations for the year ended December 31st, 2021, amounted to 13.3 million compared to 13.9 million, a 0.6 million decrease during the same period last year. For the fourth quarter, net sales amounted to $3.2 million, the same as comparable period of 2020. The annual decrease in sales is attributable to the strategic downsizing of the vape segment, which accounted for 0.4 million of the total 0.6 million decline. And so I want to freeze on this bit real quick and just talk about this um, for everyone. Firstly, guys, if you obviously want to read this yourself, it's on the website, so feel free to do so. But this bit, I think, is quite important. So they are obviously talking about strategic downsizing of the vape segment, which accounted for 0.4 million total 0.6 million decline. Now, one of the biggest thing we have talked about on this channel and one of the biggest thing we talk about in this community is obviously talking about HTMC really doubling down on that vape area because we talk about how big the vape market is. However, we can obviously see now with this recent highlight is that whilst the vape market is a huge market, HMC themselves seems to not be having a good time in this market as they main the decline was because of the vaping segment, hence why they're doing the strategic downsizing. Now, does this mean it's the end? No, it's not. So, you know, this obviously goes in terms of we've been talking about why they're doing IV therapy, why they're doing, you know, acquisition of Mother Earth storehouse, why they're not doubling down on vape. This is the main reason. However, 
we do have to understand that we still have a lot of time. Now, HMC has more cash power as compared to last year and you know any year before that, and they are trying to increase the amount of pattern that they have. The patterns that they are involved in are with vape. So when we do see the increase in vape uh, in these patterns, we'll definitely see them coming back into vape. Right now, it's gonna take time for them to figure it out. So in the meantime, it's not actually a bad thing that we are seeing them obviously, you know, doing things with this particular IV therapy. You know, we see the acquisition of Mother Earth Storehouse. So this doesn't actually mean it's a bad thing. Now that we can understand why they're doing this, it's actually a strategic uh, move. Like we said, guys, We at the end of the day, it is up to them to make their strategic moves. So far, it seems like it is a good move, but obviously we'll have more to see going into the year. Gross profit from operation decreased by approximately 0.3 million for the fourth quarter of 2021, amounting to 1 million. Compared to 1.3 million for the same period last year of 2020, gross profit decreased to 5.3 million for the year ended 31st, 2021, versus 5.8 million for the same period of 2020. Now, I know you're reading this. We're going to get onto this. There is stuff obviously to do with the supply chain issues. And so that's why we are seeing a big decrease. He does, um, you know, Jeff does mention it actually here in terms of the global supply chain. And so whilst we are seeing a decrease, guys, don't worry too much. We are seeing HTMC in a different place this year as of 2020. Yes, they could have done better this year, but that we were faced with a supply chain issue. However, going to 2022, now that they are actually actively using their cash, we're gonna see them to be in a better place. We can't even compare the 2022 HMC with 2021 or 2020 because that they have now a difference of $28 million in cash. And so it's not even gonna be a matter of can they do better in 2020, it's a matter of how they use the 28 million and that's how we should be focusing it this year. And so net loss for operations for the year ended for December 31st, 2021, amounted to approximately 4 million versus 3.7 million for the same period last year. Then, Jeffrey Holman, Chairman exec, Chief Executive Officer of HMC, continues to says, our result reflects our strategic de decision to close underperforming vape stores, coupled with challenges our operations face in the global supply chain. So here was the biggest thing, and here was their biggest strategic decision, to close underperforming vape stores. That might not be what you guys want to hear, because again, like we've said, we talk about doubling down on vape stores, on vaping, but end of the day, guys, I think that it's more important for them to focus on their patterns with vapes rather than having vape stores because they are actually increasing and will increase their revenue with the other stores that they're doing, not in the vaping industry. But as long as they continue with obviously more vape patterns because they can license that out, it will actually be extremely good for HTMC. In spite of this, we finished the year strong with fourth quarter that match our 2020 results. We remain steadfast and involved in the business as evidenced by our February 2022 acquisition of Mother Earth Storehouse, which we anticipate roughly doubling our top line revenue in 2022. So again, you guys can already see how well this is going. Now, actually from this is quite interesting because from this, which we anticipate roughly doubling our top line revenue in 2022, could show that this potential acquisition of Mother Earth Storehouse would be quite expensive. Now, again, they did this, this acquisition um, back during February 10th. So we will actually see this in the Q1 report for 2022. So that is quite interesting. That's something we do want to be looking at. But yeah, guys, it again, Right now, a conclusion for what's happening with HMC is essentially they figure out that right now what's dragging them down is their vape stores, is the vape segment. And so they are actually decreasing their focus on that. And in the meantime, they are focusing their biggest views on, again, acquisitions in retail stores like Mother Earth, Storehouse and such to increase their revenue. But one of the things that they did talk about in the year end letters to obviously increase their pattern. So don't worry about that. They're not going to get back into the vaping industry. It's that right now they're working well on improving what they have now and eventually going to be working on the vaping in the industry later on and so looking at this and one thing that we do want to talk about is how much the iv therapy costs so let's look at the loss for operations again like we said firstly cash and cash equivalents was 26 million now back in um q2 q3 of 2022 or 2021 sorry we were looking at 28 million so instantly we see a difference of to obviously $2 million in terms of cash and cash equivalents. So if we look at the loss from operation, this counts as total operating expenses, the acquisition will be actually counted in this. And so we are seeing this sitting at 2.4 million. This is why I got the previous two quarters. If we look at the previous two quarters and look at the operation cost, we can actually see that firstly for Q2, we saw operation cost of around um, loss for operations for six, um, 
685,000. The total operating expenses were 2.1 million. We then look at Q3. Total operating expenses was around 2.4 million. And now we look at Q4. Total operating expenses were sitting at 3.4 million. So each quarter, we're sitting right quite, quite averagely at 2.1, you know, 2.4 million. So it's around that 2 million mark. And yet this quarter, we are looking at 3.4. So you know, with obviously just kind of standard um, subtraction. Again, we can't quite figure it out because they have not announced it themselves. You guys can look through this. They obviously haven't talked about in terms of how much the acquisition costs. But something that we can obviously see is that it did and would seem like it costed around one to one point five million dollars for the IV therapy acquisitions. And so with this, we can be understanding really how much and how big of acquisitions HMC is making right now. And so. Compared to the cash power, they still have a lot more acquisitions and a lot more things that they can do. They're not making acquisitions where it's costing five or 10 plus or more. You know, they're not trying to find people to loan their money. They're using the cash equivalents that they have right now to make these acquisitions. And with 26 million, you know, Again, they are able to do multiple acquisitions. Obviously, we also have to account for the loss for operations, which is another reason why the cash went down. But with these acquisitions, it seems that they are able to do so and able to do a fairly large amount going into the future. And so that is quite exciting. And that is something we do want to see. So in conclusion, for this video, for those of you who are watching, for the, um, pretty much, firstly, acquisition costs around 1 to 1.5 million. Secondly, they are focusing heavily on the new stores and the healthy wellness center because that is what their biggest revenue and they see the biggest opportunity in that in terms of their business structure. And finally, whilst it, uh, they are decreasing on their vaping industry, they are going to be focusing this on later on. Right now, they're focusing on other industries. So that is quite exciting. Anyway, guys, that's it for the video. I'll catch you guys next time.